Morgan And I recently had my heart broken Broken! So I did what any logical person would do What did you do? I made a podcast about it Why? Because no matter who you are or where you're from When you get dumped, everybody's talking about it Are they, bitch? Famously dumped Hello and welcome to another episode of Famously Dumped. We are back. Yes. And I'm your host, Morgan Miller. And this is the show where we talk exclusively about getting broken up with. Okay. Where people said, we're not interested. We don't want to anymore. And they dumped us. Um, We are back with an amazing episode. Before we get started, we check in with me and my emotions and how I'm feeling. And today, you guys, I'm feeling rad. Yeah, that's right. I'm feeling rad, which is wild and crazy because as you know, I don't feel good very often, but I bought some rollerblades for the skate park yesterday and I am about to really start shredding it up. So I'm feeling rad, which is great just for the time and the hour, but I'm taking it as a win. Um, I'm also very grateful and excited because we have a wonderful guest. Oh, this is one of my closest friends in Los Angeles. I met her right when I got here. Um, Her name is Leslie Arfin. She is a writer, EP, showrunner, and she's been that for um, for shows like Betty, Girls, Love, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. She is a huge talent and so sweet and genuine and wonderful, and I can't wait to have her on. So, I mean, come on, let's get this baby started, Brandon. Bring her on in. You said puppy. Judy! <laughs> Judy! Judy's never been dumped. No. But you know Judy's um, gay. No, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. We she love a gay Judy. Dyke. Dyke. <laughs> Take back a word. Take back a word. <laughs> You're taking it back for us. <laughs> um, hey, how do you know I'm not gay? You're right. Dang, drop the mic. Um, (laughs) Hi, it's so great to see you. Thank you so much for doing the show. Thank you for having me. Cool. Let's fucking do it. So we're talking about time you got dumped. So the first thing we do is we find an alias for the person that you dumped because we don't use their real names. It makes sense, right? We don't want to call them out and all that kind of stuff. Thinking about the alias right before we got on. Okay, well... We have some help for you, but if you already have one, fantastic. But Brandon, bring it up. This is a little help if you need it. I love this. Ooh. This is top 10 baby names of 2019. Okay, this is great. Okay, Liam Oliver. <laughs> he's definitely like, he's definitely kind of like an Oliver, but he's such a Declan. <laughs> Glenn, Henry, Caleb. Benjamin. Too many syllables. It's honestly, it's truly your choice. And it it does mean a lot. Do the same names for everyone. No, people pick, have been picking different ones, but I'll let you know if you've you've picked a similar one. I'm trying to think of like what I can get into. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. Like wrap my head around. Sure, sure. Something that feels connected, right? Since we're not going to use the real name. I feel that. I feel you. Mine was, for my ex, I've decided it's Darcy, which is, it's just, it felt right. Yeah. that I like that name. Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to choose Liam, but can I shorten it to Lee? Yes. Okay. <laughs> So he, uh, in terms for this podcast, his birth name is Liam, but we will be calling him by his nickname, Lee. Yeah. Great. Perfect. Awesome. So Lee. So, uh, great. That's what we're going to be calling him from here on out. And if you want to mention my ex. I might say Liam. I might say Liam. And honestly, that's okay. That was his birth name. So we love that. So great. So now we do a section right before we dig into it that is called... Dump stats. Dump stats. These are the dump stats. <laughs> there we go. There's your baseball card, and that is a song original by me. I love it. Thank you. This is your uh, baseball card, and we do this section called dump stats, where we just get some 
statistics out of the way about you um, and your life as a person who has gotten dumped. So statistic number one, how many times have you been dumped, Leslie? Definitely one, like possibly three. I guess like two. Two. Great. Two. We'll say two. Um, how many, uh, well, wait, have you ever dumped someone? And if so, how many times? Yes. Uh, one, two, de two definite. And then I'd say like two or all, like, breakups mm -hmm. dumped twice dumped ha dumped other people twice and then two times mutual breakups wow. okay wow two 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 yeah for like big relationships i'd say possibly three i've dumped three people but like possibly three it's kind of like the major ones that stick out is great two. Perfect. Awesome. Great. And then for this one that we were talking about with Lee, how long ago did it happen? I mean, it had like over 20 years ago because I was in college. I wasn't even 20 yet. And I'm 41 now. Wow. Okay, great. So then you've already answered our next question, which is how old you were, which you weren't even 20. I was probably 19, 20. 19. Okay. Great. Uh, and then um, how long were you and Lee together? Okay. So we were together from like, I, from like February, March to um, July, August, but like, and I know that's not a long time, but you also have to understand the context in which we went out. Great. Okay. I trust me, five months can seem like a lifetime. So especially as a lesbian, five months in, in dyke years, since we are reclaiming the word yeah. is like three years. And like when I go out with somebody, like I go hard. Yeah. Yeah. You go. Yes. Great. All right. I can't wait to hear about it. Uh, great. And then how are you feeling emotionally about the breakup right now? Fine. Fine. Great. I don't think it's like a good story. Great. And then finally, when it happened, did you go full psycho? Yes. <laughs> Great. Yes, I went full psycho. <laughs> <laughs> Great. All right. Those are your dump stats. I make fun of you, Morgan, because I love it. What's that? Can I make fun of you a little bit? <laughs> yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> um, we love it. I yes, give it, give it. So we're gonna go over your dump stats just very quickly. Uh, you have been dumped two times. You've dumped someone two to three times. Uh, this particular one with Lee, it happened over twenty years ago. You weren't even twenty or maybe nineteen. You guys were together five months, but we're about to hear that that is a lengthy amount of time, and you're feeling fine. This is a good story, and um, you definitely went a full psycho. Yeah. Great. So let's get into it. How did you meet and how was the relationship? Just really quickly. Sort of just like met him through friends at a party in college. Great. And so how was it? It was really fun. It was great. It was great. Yep. Yeah, and the relationship was great for the five months. Yeah. I mean, he was two years older than me, so he was graduating. I was not. But I mean, we still hung out all the time, like as we did when we were best friends. Mm -hmm. But also slept together and like pretty much every night and did drugs together and drank together and went on hikes and um in that order. <laughs> basically. <laughs> I remember there was one time while we were going out where after this was this was the one like bad time. Is this time for me to tell this? Yeah. Okay, so like we went on a hike and then afterwards we went down to this little like farmer's marketplace to eat breakfast. And I had gotten like a bagel with cream cheese or something. And we were talking and eating breakfast and everything was normal. 
And then he was like, like in the middle of the conversation, he was like, can you not smack your lips when you eat? Oh no. And I was like, I never forgot it. I was like, oh. yeah. And he's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just like, I, I'm like, no, it's fine. I'm like, I was just like, so taken aback. Yeah. And like, he wasn't, you know, he's probably right. Like, <laughs> like my mom does that now. I notice it after he said that, like I noticed it. And now like when my mom does it, I'm like, can you not like. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things that someone says it and then you're forever changed about yeah. how the way you look at now how someone eats. So like, right. So like, this was like, you know, probably inching closer towards June, which was graduation and maybe my little quirks and quandaries were getting on his nerves. <laughs> But yeah, I was just like, so, <sighs> but you know, I just brushed it off and like kept going out. with him. Yeah. Okay, great. So it was good, except there was a rocky moment where he commented on your eating. Yeah. Which changed your life forever. <laughs> 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 so great. So let's get to it. How did he dump you and what happened? How did you go full psycho? So, okay. So graduation was approaching and he was graduating. I was not, but we never talked about what that meant for our relationship. Also, he was spending the summer in New York where I happened to live. So I wasn't really like, we had never brought it up. Like, what are we going to do? Cause it was like, Oh, I'm going to New York. I'll be in New York too. Like, great, great. Like we were still going strong. He was staying in Brooklyn. I was staying in my, at my sister's in Manhattan. And this was like very beginning of July. Mm -hmm. We were hanging out, hanging out for like a couple of weeks. And, um, I mean, a couple weeks, maybe it was more like a week. I don't know. But it was like he slept over my sister's house. We went out. We hung out. We had so much fun. Um, and then he slept over at my sister's. I walked into the subway, and I was like, what are you doing later? I don't know. Do you want to do something? He says to me, and I'm like, yeah, totally. Let's go to 80s night at Coney Island High, which was yeah. like, was like, yeah, totally. Like, I'll call you later. Okay, cool. So talk to you later. Bye. Never saw him again. Never again. Nope. Never heard from him again. No, a straight ghost. Oh my God. Of course you went full psycho. Yep. Oh my God. Okay. So. You got to tell me what happened. Did you contact him? Did he not respond to text? What what happened? We I called him like I did, like I had at his number where I had called him all the time, which was his friend's house. He was staying like answering machine, answering machine, not home, not home. Like, do you know where he is? Because like I knew the friend he was staying with, like. No, I don't know where he is. I don't, I think like, and then like no answer, no answer. Then it was like, I, he's not staying here anymore. I was, you know, just like got, it just elevated to like a ghosting, asking my friends who were like better friends, who were friends with him and with me, like what happened? Where is he? Do you know what happened to him? Did he say anything to you? What the fuck? It was just heartbreaking. Oh, and I, was, I, mean, I do wrong, you know? Yeah. This happened to me for the first girl, girl I ever hooked up with in my whole life. So it was super important to me. And she straight up ghosted me and I texted, emailed all this stuff. I, I emailed and it was like, if you're just, just let me know you're alive. Yeah. No response. Nothing. She's, she wrote, wait, drove me insane. I thought she might, I like in my head, I was like convinced she died. Oh, I went through that phase. Hold on, you're kind of now you're okay. I went through that phase of like it 
is he okay? Did he get into a car accident? Did he get mugged? Is he alive? Is he dead? Did somebody in his family die? Is he okay? So that was like my first, like, you know, it's like the denial. Like, I just want to make sure he's okay. Mm -hmm. Of course he's okay, you know. But how I got through it, you know, like I wrote a lot and I drank a lot and did a lot of drugs. Mm -hmm. Because like, and then I probably, you know, did a lot of coke that summer and like hooked up with a lot of like dirt bags. And I just tried to like abuse myself to get through it. So I probably just like hooked up with a bunch of people I wasn't really into and like got hooked up all the time, wrote a lot, probably like worked some shitty job, you know, that was, I'd say like the cleanest, break I've ever had like it was definitely like ripping the band-aid off majorly yeah and I mean it's probably like you know I, I can't say if it was like the saddest I'd ever felt because there's like different kinds of sadness like I've had breakups where I've been like dev devastated I'm like but there's also like a lot of bittersweet relief that comes mm -hmm. to like this was kind of like the most stinging sadness it was like the most painful sadness and like a lot of anger um and it was really hard to choose between the two mm. like i hated him but i also like felt like i had done something wrong and so I just, there was like, I just wanted to know what that was. Like, I was just so, so it was like, there was a lot more anger inward and outward. Whereas like with other breakups, it's usually just been like more sad. Mm -hmm. I had never been like rejected like that. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, it was, it was good for me to experience that. It was humbling that like, oh, this is possible. Like not everybody, just because like you have this great experience with somebody, like not everybody is the same at the same emotional level. Oh, like a recap. So you were super angry, but the way you coped was you drank and you drugged. You had sex with a bunch of people, but you really hung out with your friends and tried to separate from him in general. And uh, in I, can do. I was power completely powerless. Right. So you had to, so like, it seems like acceptance was like what you had to come to to get through that. Yeah. But like, I never, I acceptance, but I, I also just like tucked it away in a pocket and wrote a lot about it and did a lot of drugs over it. Like I wouldn't have used the word acceptance. I would have, rep I would have said I was repressing it. Mm, yeah. Like putting a bandaid over it. Cause like, I didn't know, I didn't know how to accept it until many years later when I got sober mm -hmm. and went yeah. to therapy and like started talking about that kind of pain. Like, no, I certainly did not get over it that summer or for many years. Mm. I held, I held on to that and it ate away at me. It was like one of the things that like contributed to yeah. me hurting myself, destroying my life. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So, just like kind of for our viewers, what is up a bit? Bep it up a bit. Get the what? last part. <laughs> <laughs> is your overall advice for someone going through a breakup, maybe when they're younger, without the tools or kind of the capacity to have acceptance? What's your overall advice for someone going through a breakup like this? 
Whoa, hold on one second. Hi, before we get to the overall advice, my name is Morgan Miller. You've just been watching me this whole time. I'm the host of Famously Dumped, and I've got a couple of things I gotta tell you before we finish up the episode. One, we have an email account, famouslydumped at gmail.com, where you can email me. Maybe you have comments, questions for our guests, questions for me. Maybe you have advice for our listeners, or maybe you have a story about getting dumped that you want to tell me about. So please email me there. I'd love to hear from you, and we'll put it on the podcast. Two, you can donate to the show, which is great. How can you donate? At our Venmo, which is famously underscore dumped. Or you can go on over to my Patreon account, which is Patreon dot com backslash Morgan Miller 1717 over on my Patreon will live bonus episodes, uncut episodes and other comedy material that I'm coming out with that will strictly be on Patreon. Okay. So head on over there. And finally, don't forget to follow me on social media. Yes. I'm doing a social media plug. Come on. It's 2021. Let's get to it. My social media is Morgan Miller 17 across the board. And also I'm on TikTok. Yes. I'm in my thirties. I have TikTok. I kind of blew up over there. So go check me out. That's Morgan Miller Talks, T-O-K-S. And that's about it. You guys, let's get back to the episode. Enough for me. Bring us on back. I have no advice. Mm. There's no advice. You can go through it. It sucks. Like, do whatever you need to do to cope. Like, I need my coping, my coping mechanisms. I hate that word. Like, what is mechanisms? Like, my coping tools were like... (laughs) Drinking, smoking weed, writing, let, hanging out with my friends and laughing, doing mm-hmm. drugs, doing harder drugs, dancing, crying, making mixtapes, writing letters and sending them, writing letters and not sending them. There, I just don't die. Don't kill yourself over it, for real. For real, yeah. But I have no advice. It's like... There's no, there's no like, there's no way to fix it. It's like growing pains. You got to go through these things and it sucks and it won't be forever, but it might be longer than you want it to be. Might not be. I also would like try to get a crush on somebody immediately all the time to get over the last person. That worked for me. That like quote unquote worked for me for like, a bunch of years. Yeah. When I say quote unquote work, that's because it didn't really ultimately, I was like the same thing kept happening over and over again, but it, um, um, it didn't kill me, you know? So I don't have advice. I mean, I think you just gave a lot of advice. It's like, and your advice pretty much to just like sum it down is like, don't kill yourself and like cope. And that's honestly, what I needed. To, I mean, you were there, you were there for my whole breakup. And I think you kind of said the same thing when I asked you, what the fuck am I supposed to do? You were like, you're going to be in a lot of pain for a while and you kind of have to just be in it and like, don't kill yourself and don't relapse. And I was close to doing both of those things. And thank God you were my one of like the, my go-to people that I could be, I was really crazy with you as if we both remember. I don't think you, I don't remember that at all. Like, I don't remember you being crazy at all. If anything, I wish that I could have been there more for you. And I felt like the thing is, is that the solution, uh, the word solution sounds like it's going to make things better Mm. and it does, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be pain free. Mm -hmm. Like the solution to like, you know, I'm not thinking of a good example, but like, I don't know, the solution to like fucking breaking your arm is like getting a cast. It doesn't not hurt, it hurts. Mm. Not pain free, but like that's the solution is to like, it has to sit, it has to chill. It has to sit in that pain and heal. Like when you cut yourself, And there's a scab. The scab is your body healing itself within the wound. It doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't do anything. It just, you have to like let it scab. And it's, Mm -hmm. and I wish that, and it's like that, but that is the solution. And it's like, it solution sounds like, like a solve, a calming solve. And it's just like, I wish. 
But also you get off the, I told you too. I, I mean, I'm sure I told you like when you get over this, when you get like to the other side, you will be like, so like, this is like another notch in your belt that like you will be all the better because of this. Like breakups are great for comedy. Yeah. <laughs> breakups yeah. are great for material. Breakups are great for your next relationship. They're stepping stones. Like we can't be in the relationship that we really want until we know how to do the relationships we don't want. Mm -hmm. And it's like that starts, that happens a lot when we're young. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's a thank you for your analogy. It feels like like you have a doctorate in um, scabs and arm breaks. I do. <laughs> How long was that schooling? How long was what my school? That's, yeah, you're schooling to get to learn the things yeah. you just told us. <laughs> it was an online software program that was two weeks long. Wait, Morgan, see how good you are. Like. See how good you are now? Yeah, now, because I'm talking to you. I fucking love you. But yeah, before we even started talking, you started this podcast and you were like, I feel rad this morning. Yeah. Like, I don't. And like, everything's fine. I mean, I feel fine, but like, I wouldn't be like, I feel rad. I don't say that word, by the way. <laughs> what, when did you become so LA? I know I hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I mean, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a uh, hour by hour, you know, like this morning I, I woke up, I woke up in tears, honestly, it, today I had a mo like a moment this morning where I was like, wow, I might never talk to Darcy again and she might never be in my life again. And I have to accept that. But wow, was that sad when you thought you were going to marry that person and spend the rest of your life with them? I... I am not psych. I'm like a little bit psychic, but like I'm not going off of that right now. I'm telling you, you will talk to her again. You will also be friends with her again, and you will have a relationship with her that is beyond what you ever could have imagined. This was so wonderful. You, this was great. So we have two ending segments before I get you out of here. Um, the first one, Brandon, is. And now, time for horoscopes. <laughs> Great. <laughs> this is horoscopes. This is where we figure out if you and Liam were doomed from the start and should have never started dating in the first place based on your signs. Because as you know, I believe in them fully. And uh, if you need to figure that out before you start dating someone, it's important. So. What is your sign, Leslie? I should know this. Pisces. Pisces, you're right. Like my father. My father's a Pisces. Um, you're a Pisces, and we believe Liam's a Sagittarius. Yeah. Great. So we go to the most reputable site of all time to talk about astrology, and that is Brandon. Google.com. <laughs> so we will type in um, uh, Pisces and Sagittarius love compatibility, and we'll see... Uh, if it says that you were going to get ghosted, wouldn't that be crazy if it was like, yeah. you're going to get ghosted? <laughs> yeah. All right. Love compatibility. Great. And we click on the first arrow because that is the most reputable one. And it says Sagittarius and Pisces is one of the harder Zodiac pairings to make work. The very low scores represent the initial compatibility of this match. However, you both, you're both flexible enough to make this work. And if you succeed, the scores would be much higher. So how does that? Line up? I mean, it says like harder Zodiac pairings to make work. Like yeah. that's makes sense. Yeah. Right. So doomed doomed from the beginning it feels as if but hindsight 2020 and now our <laughs> last segment of the entire podcast brandon what's the last segment yes, yes honey yes this is three compliments for morgan this is where you give me three compliments so i don't feel so shitty about myself and my breakup 
Dude, I thought I gave you three compliments a couple months ago. You did, you did, but this is for the show. Damn. Like, First you don't like giving them again, bitch. No, I was thinking that about you this morning because I was like, oh, fucking Morgan, I got to do it's not a podcast, it's a face cast. I'm like, easy for Morgan because she has bump it up, perfect skin. Morgan has such good skin. It's really unfair, beautiful skin tone. Look <laughs> Italian, but you're not so unfair. Uh, Thank you. God bless. Another compliment. You laugh at my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm funny. You're so fucking selfish. <laughs> That's true. Okay. I do. I think you're unbelievably funny. Okay, great. Good compliment. I love you laugh. And whenever I hear you laugh at something I've said, it fills my heart with joy. Because I'm like, nailed it. <laughs> love um, it and then my third compliment to you look at that sweet face I mean there's so much I can say I'm just trying to think of the right way to go here oh you are and this is going to sound basic but it's not one of my favorite things about you is that you're friendly so like me and you can go up to anybody and like We'll be like, I want to talk to that person. Me too. Let's go be friends with her. And we just like go, whether it's like in person or on Zoom or whatever, we're like on it. Like, I feel like you are really good at making other people feel included. I think I, I don't want to copy what I said to you last time, but that is something that I notice about you and like admire and is very inspiring to me is that like you're not um you're not like um this is exclusive this is like a private thing you're like no like you're invited come yes call me like even when you have a private joke with somebody else you're not like fall back fall back this is our thing you're like yeah like yeah leslie like make fun of chris or whatever <laughs> you're very inclusive and i that goes a long way with me because I have a real hard time with feeling left out. I know. Yeah. I, I think we both feel that way, but I, you've always made me feel included and you've been one of my best friends since I moved to Los Angeles. I feel very lucky. Oh my God. I, I know. I know. And here's the thing. You did give compliments that also sort of highlighted you as well, which I love. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I just want to let the viewers know that also Leslie said, like, I'm really funny and charming. <laughs> and I'm great with her kid. You know, she just yeah. had too many. She had too many to, to choose from. You know, Morgan is so good with my kid. That's so sweet. That's major. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so proud of you. Thank you, Leslie. You're the best. Oh, uh, this was a dream episode. Thank you so much for being on it. I will do anything for you whenever you want. It means the world. And I, I you did as well. You know I'd take a bullet for you. I'm not going to take a bullet for you. I know you're not. That's crazy. I know. But thank you for taking I don't. Me. I don't fear death. <laughs> Neither do I. I don't fear it. It's more like if I took... Maybe I'm still just too depressed about my breakup, so the thought of taking a bullet for you sounds good. I know, right? I'm like, I would give you the shirt off my back and if I wasn't wearing a bra. <laughs> I would feel like. Well, that's, that's, and honestly, that's your version of taking a bullet for someone. So I really appreciate it. I love you, Leslie. Thank you so much for being on the show. Bye. Bye. That's it, guys. That's another episode of Famously Dumped. Ugh, isn't Leslie Arfin just a dream of a person? She's so sweet and wonderful. We were so lucky to have her um, and that she would do anything for me, honestly. what We love that. Uh, she was so great. I learned a ton. I hope you did, too. That's another episode, guys. Thanks for joining us. Brandon, would you take us out with a song of your choice? We don't have the rights to any music. Famously Dumped.